Okay, we are here again for Brush Hour. This show happens every two weeks here on Adobe Live, and we talk about these wonderful, magical brush sets that are available to all of you who have a uh, Photoshop or a Fresco subscription. There are over 1,900 brushes. Now, of course, this can be a little bit overwhelming for folks if you're not uh, familiar with these brush sets. You kind of look at them and you say, well, where do I start? Now there are certain sets that people are familiar with and they like to use like the Mega Pack and their Mega Pack alone has over 400 brushes, um, which is kind of beastly. So there are also these smaller sets though uh, that sometimes get ignored because people will get something like the Mega Pack or the watercolor set and say, well, I'm set now, I've got it all. A common uh, misconception about the Mega Pack, and I've said this many times, but it bears repeating, is that the Mega Pack does not include all the brushes. It says Mega Pack, but folks, it's a separate brush set, completely unique and different from all the others. So um, you're missing out if you get the Mega Pack and you don't get other sets, okay? Today we are focusing, this is part two of a series on uh, smaller, maybe lesser known brush sets. The last time around, two weeks ago, uh, we, we focused um, on the runny inker brush set. Uh, today we're talking about the impressionist brush set, okay? And this one is really fun. All right. Let's say hi to some folks in the chat who's joining us today. I see Bruce, I see Leo, I see Biola, I see Caroline and uh, Bliss. Steve is here. What's up, Sean, Laura? And um, I know I'm missing some folks. Sorry, I'm just trying to scroll through here and see who's yeah, what's up, Sam and Anika? Thanks, everybody, for joining us. I want to mention also, if you're watching on YouTube or Twitter, um, thank you for watching. And uh, if you want to talk to me directly during the show, uh, please head over to behance.net slash live or be.net slash live. And that's where I'm following the chat, okay? Bernadette, nice to see you. Thanks for joining. And uh, Clever, how are you? Richard, what's up, folks? All right, when we get started, we'll talk about this wonderful impressionist brush set. Um, why don't we start at the top here? And I'll tell you about the inspiration for these brushes. I, of course, am a huge fan of the French impressionists. You have your Monet's, you have your Van Gogh's, um, and all the rest, uh, Seurat and Pissarro, uh, all these good folks. Um, and I thought it'd be fun to design a brush set around this general sort of movement in the uh, history of art where maybe you're not really getting into the nitty gritty and the detail of painting. You're instead doing uh, some painting that involves some nice soft edges here and there, some lost edges here and there, some some uh, smattering of, of various colors that are close to one another in hue, saturation, and value, um, but add a lot of texture to the canvas, the surface of the image, um, and give you an impression of what it is you're looking at. Uh, and that was the goal. So starting here at the top, we have this Cezanne brush, and um, a lot of these are named after these famous artists from this period in art history. It doesn't necessarily mean that the brush strokes you're going to create are going to be a copy of or emulate uh, the sort of style that these artists use, okay? In some ways, yes, in some ways, no. Um, but with Cezanne, I'd say it's a pretty close match for, for, some of his, for some of his work, some of his still lifes and whatnot. So let's take a look at a basic brush stroke here with this brush. There you go. Now you see the stamp as I hover here over the screen has this interesting um, group of shapes. And if I were to simply make one stamp right here like that, you could take a closer look at uh, what this brush is comprised of here, okay? Now, the secret to making this work is, we're gonna open our brushes panel here. And part of what we do here on Brush Hour is we, we look at brushes and then we look at the brush settings panel so you can better understand what it is that the brushes that you're using do. So you can also then customize them a little bit for your own purposes and um, also get a little education about how custom brushes work 
uh, here in Photoshop. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I'm going to go into Shape Dynamics. Um, in fact, no, let me start here with, with the, the very first menu, Brush Tip Shape, because here I want you to look at the spacing. One of the keys to these Impressionist brushes doing their thing is increasing the spacing, okay? So that when I go ahead and drag along the screen, I'm able to see these different instances of the brush stamp as I paint. Okay, that's, that's a key thing here in making these work. Um, so you see here the spacing is set at 50%, okay? And if you're wondering what these percentages mean, um, when you look at the total width in pixel dimensions of the stamp, Okay, so in this case, the stamp is 250 pixels, roughly 249. Let's just say 250 pixels. 50% uh, of 250 pixels is about, what, 125 pixels, right? And that 125 pixels then becomes the spacing that we're using. So uh, it's going to lay a stamp down about every 125 pixels in distance as I drag along, okay? That's what that means. Um, now, why increase the spacing for these brushes? Well, it's because I want you to see these individual instances of the stamp. What would happen if I were to reduce this down to one and then paint with it? That's what you get. Now, that is also a very nice look, okay, and quite useful for an impressionist kind of a painting, isn't it? And so, this is why I want to reveal these things to you. If you like the way this looks, if you like the way any of these brushes look and you want to play with this spacing value, okay, to get different results, then by all means, go ahead and do that. And if you like the result and you want to save a variation of this brush, okay, what you do is, in your brushes panel, you tap on this little plus sign here, okay? And I say, ah, okay, this is going to be a Cezanne, Pull this back up here. Cezanne, maybe tight. Okay, so I know it's tighter spacing. So, okay. And there you'll see it saves that variant of the brush and you have it for future use. Okay? So that's one thing. We've got spacing. Let's look at shape dynamics. The angle jitter, okay, which is taking the stamp and it's just rotating it slightly clockwise or counterclockwise, is set to 2%. Um, so this is very little angle jitter, and that's because I want this brush to follow along with the direction in which you're painting, okay? I gotta reset it back to its normal values for spacing there. Um, the roundness jitter, you might be wondering what that is. Well, if you look at the stamp, okay, and imagine that you are able to squish it down, okay, from the top and just deform it that way. All right, so taking a square basically and then compressing it down to a rectangle. You are doing the same thing with this stamp, all right? And um, you can set how far down you could compress it, okay, with this minimum roundness value here. So if it were 100 pixels in height, you'd be able to get it down to 25 pixels in height. You'd be able to squish it that much if you were to leave this set to 25%, okay? And what that's doing is it's just changing very slightly, okay, because I only, I'll have it to 20%. If I were to crank that up to 100, look at my brush preview right here in this window, and you'll see that sometimes it's a lot skinnier, right? Sometimes it's normal, sometimes it's skinnier. And this, again, could be the kind of thing that could be useful. All right, you might want to save a variant of the brush for that purpose. Um, but for now, we'll leave it where it was. Okay. Um, and then here we have the flipping of the X and the Y jitter. Um, so this means that I'm taking my brush stamp and I'm randomly flipping it, mirroring it, okay, either on the X axis or the Y axis. This is going to give you more variety in the brush stroke you make, so it doesn't look quite as repetitive, okay? So these are some important things to note about how these are created. Um, I'm gonna come over here to scattering. Now scattering, what it's doing is it's taking 
the brush stamp and as I, for example, draw in a line straight downward, you'll notice that even though, I'll use my lasso tool to call this out for you all. Hang on a minute. This is an instance of the stamp right here, up at the top, okay? But look over here. The next instance, all right, is off to the side here. And then I come down here and it's sort of back in line but slightly off to the right and then off to the left. So essentially what's happening is this, if I could just switch my brush for a moment. Instead of a line being drawn straight down like this, okay, I'm getting a bit of a zigzag effect. And what it's doing is it's placing a stamp here, then placing a stamp there, then there, then there. This is what scattering is doing, okay? And that's why we're seeing what we're seeing right there. And again, this just adds to that happy accident kind of look you're gonna get when you use these brushes where you're not looking for precision, you're looking for a nice painterly, colorful, impressionistic look Alrighty, so back to our brush settings here. Now, if I were to increase the value, I want you to look down here, okay, at my brush stamp preview. See that? Look at what happens with scattering increasing, okay? And that is why the value is not too high for this brush. I can't remember where it was. I think it's about 14 pixels or thereabouts. Um, and uh, the reason is I still want to have enough control that I can paint in a single direction and get it where I want, okay? But I do like it to just bounce out every now and then a little bit outside of that area. All right, now we haven't talked about this yet. I want to show you something. I'm going to use very light pressure when I paint with it for a second here. See that? Okay, now if I zoom in, you should notice that there is a very subtle canvas texture baked into this brush, a canvas texture, right? Because I'm imagining that you're painting with oils on canvas, like most of these artists did, right? Um, now that is being activated with the help of our good friend here, texture. Okay, so I have this texture file. Okay, this is Kyle's Monk canvas, and that's named after Edvard Monk. And um, if you notice here, I have my texture tied to pen pressure to control the height, okay? What this means is, if you imagine the three-dimensional surface texture of canvas and you're looking at it from the side, right? And you're gonna see, if you're looking at canvas from the side, you're gonna see all these little bumps of the weave, okay? So there's our canvas looking at it cross section, right? And as I'm dragging my paintbrush along this way, right? If I use light pressure, well, what's gonna happen? Well, paint is only gonna touch these raised areas. All right, so when it comes to the height, okay, Photoshop is reading this canvas texture in terms of grayscale values, black all the way down to white, right? And the black areas are going to be considered the areas that are uh, raised, okay, these bumps. The white areas are the areas that are recessed and everything in between. As I use more pressure, okay, I'm going to use more of the texture and reveal everything uh, between black and white, all values of it, which means it's going to basically fill it in solid. All right, but if I'm using light pressure, I'm revealing only those top bumps, okay? Those black areas of the texture. And that is why you're able to see that canvas texture when I use light pressure, okay? And that is a handy thing to be able to do because again, it just adds a little more interest uh, to the painting and is making it once again, feel a little bit more like traditional media. Oh, okay, I'm gonna pause for a moment. I'm talking about a lot of stuff. I wanna see if there's any questions from anybody here in the chat. 
Um, very interested in this brush set, says Leo. Yeah, hey, cool, me too. I like this brush set. It doesn't get enough love. Um, let's see. Mona, thank you for joining us. We're doing math now, says Sean. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Um, does Fresco have the same brush settings as Photoshop? It does, Laura. Thank you for asking. Um, there are only a couple of things that we don't yet have baked into Fresco for the brush settings, but they're coming um, before Christmas. So they're on the way. Things like color dynamics and dual brushes, things like that. Um, let's see. Alrighty, uh, not seeing any questions, but lots of good comments, so thank you for all those. Um, and if there are any questions, just throw them there in the chat, and I will, of course, be checking periodically. All right, so that's really the basics of this brush set. Now, the big one is this. Why is it that every time I put down some color, okay, it's not always consistent with the color that I have selected with my color picker. It's close, okay, but it's jumping all over the place with hue and saturation. Uh, not saturation, but hue and value a little bit. Um, what is the reason for that? It's color dynamics, our best friend. We talk about it all the time. Love me some color dynamics. So let's open up the color dynamics and the settings here and look at this. We have a hue jitter of 11%. That means that whatever hue you've selected, whatever color you've selected, it's gonna bounce either to the left or to the right on the color wheel a little bit, okay? In either direction, if we're looking at blue here, okay, you can look at my color wheel here, it's either gonna bounce more towards the greens or a little bit more towards the purples. By a low amount, 11% is not that high. Um, but it's enough for us to see a nice change here. We also have brightness jitter set at 3%. Pretty cool. Um, so that's going to change the brightness or the um, value of the color as well. Let's do an experiment. I'm going to pull hue jitter down to nothing and pump brightness jitter up to 10. I want you to look at the result here. Now this can be very helpful. Okay. What you're getting here is a much more subtle change, right? That really is keeping the hue consistent, but it's changing the value. So you can also use this to your advantage with impressionistic work that maybe you don't want to be quite as, you know, crazy colorful, but you still want to have the impression that you are using these bold um, brush strokes, right? With a sort of scattering of the, of the, the bristles and, and of the paint, little globs of paint here and there. Um, if you want to do that, you can turn up the brightness jitter. Okay, and turn the hue jitter down to nothing. And I think that's gonna give you great results. If you like that, you can of course then save that brush as a variant of whatever it is you're using. And you're still gonna get these neat results where you can see these individual dashes and dots and blobs and all this, okay, without the color itself shifting too far away from whatever it is you want it to be. If you want a little bit of hue jitter, of course, you can always bump that up a hair, like 4%. Okay, there's a result. So that's nice and subtle as well. This is so cool because you can just change it to your heart's content, get exactly what it is you need, save that brush, and you're set. All right, so that is the big mother right there, color dynamics. That's the one. Um, now, all the brushes take advantage of this in this little set, all right? Now, I say little set because, again, this series, you know, this little mini-series we're doing is on these smaller sets. And if you look at the Impressionist brushes, I think there are only about 12 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, maybe more like, maybe like 18. But it's not a lot, okay? Not a lot of brushes. All right. Now, let's take a look at Cezanne 2. In fact, I'll, I'll leave Cezanne 1 here up on the screen so we can see it again. Go to Cezanne 2, and you can see that is a different look, okay? More subtle color changes and a softer appearance of the paint, okay? Not so sharp. 
So that could be good for when you have an area that you want to sort of blend with another area a little bit. Um, imagine if I'm using Cezanne 1 and I want to put some color next to it. Okay, do something a little crazier here like this. I want to put this color next to it. And instead of having them overlap so hard like that, I'll grab that Cezanne 2 brush, come back to my original color, and then just kind of softly paint over it like this, grab that color, paint over it a little bit like this. I'm using light pressure here. And I can create a nice transition between these two areas. You see that? That's a little softer transition, not so sharp. Okay. Or you could do a whole painting, of course, with this Cezanne too. It's a nice brush. Very nice. One thing I forgot to mention is when you're in the brush settings, if you look at shape dynamics, um, you could always bring the size of the brush down farther as well for the minimum amount of pressure you're going to use. If you're in the mood to have a brush that can go from a very fat to a very thin stroke. Okay. Now, none of these strokes are going to be too thin on the, on the lower side simply because we're using that texture with transfer to get it down um, to a smaller size, but then that's going to reveal more of the texture. Right? If you wanted to change that, you would increase the depth of the texture. If you look down here, okay, the more I increase that depth, the thinner the line gets on the low end. Okay, So fat down to thin. But then I don't see as much of the texture. All right, so it's a trade-off. It's a trade-off. If I turn off transfer, I'll get a smaller mark down there at the bottom. I can bring it all the way down to zero as well. And a way to cheat this, if you're curious, is you can play with this roundness jitter, and you can set that to pen pressure, and then bring it down even lower as well. And now you've really got a fine line that you can use with the brush. Okay bring my texture back down and see how much of that I can get away with. Hopefully we can still get some of that to read. Yeah, you still get a little bit of it down there. So again, things you can do to customize them to get them where you want. Let's look at the French detail brush. Let's look at the French detail brush here. So there it is. So this one you have a lot of control with. All right, I can really control this brush. And as I go over an area with light pressure, right, it's going to sort of soften or remove a lot of those chunkier details. If I use more pressure here, and by the way, folks, I've moved my microphone today. You may have noticed um, the reason being I'm trying for the microphone to not pick up as much noise from my stylus, and that's because I use the soft nibs on the Wacom uh, pen here. I'll, I'll show you this up close. I use these nice soft nibs here, and uh, these soft nibs are felt, and um, I, fa I find that they feel really natural to draw with, and I like them, but they make a lot of noise and scratch on the surface of the Cintiq and make it sound uh, pretty pretty noisy during my stream sometimes. So trying to get the mic to pick up less of that noise. All right, French fat bristle. This one's a chunky one. Look at that. Chunk, chunk, chunk. Chunky town. I find this one particularly handy for backgrounds. Okay, so why don't we just go ahead and knock one in. This nice subtle color here. So yeah, I can just kind of go in any old direction, scrub around like this. And that could be the beginnings of a sky. Every now and then I'll come to an area and I'll just kind of soften it by using light pressure and just sort of scrubbing over it. And it just it just kind of breaks up that that hard edge. Right, go a little more saturated here, and I can start to come up here into this area. Maybe even a bit darker. Like that. A little lighter as I come down. 
you know that whole thing about as when you're painting a sky, you know, as you come down towards the horizon, you want to lighten it up a little bit and uh, you want to maybe warm it up a tiny bit as well. Depends on what you're doing. Sometimes you want to cool it off a little bit, you know, because of that atmospheric distortion. But it's really fun for these big chunky strokes to just knock those in. I like to stab at the canvas too, just kind of pop, 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 pop. And I'm also using the uh, eyedropper tool, temporarily calling that up with the option key. Now, if you're on a PC, you're gonna do that with the alt key, okay? And here I'm doing that gentle sort of scrubbing action a little bit, all right? Come over to that Cezanne brush. Maybe we wanna come down here and just lighten it up towards the bottom, make it a little less intense. I'm using light pressure here, but these play nicely together, see that? These play nicely together. Okay, we're coming on down here towards the, uh, the horizon maybe. All this nice activity up here, I can, I can soften a bit of that too with those transitions using the same Cezanne brush. This is the second one, right? Cezanne 2. Let me just zoom in here so you can see now. Look at all that nice activity we have. Okay, getting some nice little greens in there, some pops of blue, but also some little greens, right? Now I'm just kind of popping over it, some light texture using that Cezanne 2 brush. And you know, you just couldn't do this with any other brushes to be able to quickly knock in this amount of color and texture and all this nice variety, right? But with these two brushes, just two brushes here, right? Come in and we paint in that nice impressionistic sky, okay? And that is a really fun thing to be able to do. All right, so that was the French fat bristle, okay? Combined with the Cezanne 2. Let's take a look at this French point small. You may have guessed with the word point what we're talking about here. And this is a kind of a pointillism brush right here. And it's small because it's only 125 pixels in diameter. Uh, so you can do some nice detail work with this, some smaller things, okay? Not tremendous amount of detail because again, that's not really the purpose of using these brushes. Okay, we're not, we're not going for crazy amounts of detail and things. Um, but here's a nice pop of color to get with this. And um, you can just tell by looking at the brush stamp that we're getting a nice spattery kind of uh, stamp there. And that is of course being applied all across with different rotation. It's, it's rotating all around. It's being flipped horizontally, flipped vertically. So what you get is this nice variety of marks. Okay, with not, without any repetition or at least not any repetition that the the old eye could catch easily, and that's a lovely thing. All right, so for this, you know, you could, because it's a smaller brush, you, if you wanted to, you could be a bit more specific uh, with your painting. You know, if you wanted to just suggest like a little, little head, head of a person like that, you know? And you can always carve around it with another color. It's always a nice thing. Just kind of come, just butt up against it like that and just sort of shape it the way you want. And there's our person just standing there.
let some of that color overlap, let some of it mingle with that blue, right? So it's not so perfectly separated. Throw a bit more color in there. Carving away a bit more at this here while I go. And there you go. So from a distance, there's your little person hanging out. You can make the brush even smaller if you wanted to. If you wanted to have a bit more detail. Of course, you don't want to go crazy, right? That's not the point of what we're doing here. But if you want to go a little darker here, a little ocular cavity, or maybe show some, some shading. So here I am just adding a bit of that. Try to suggest a face with shadow more than anything else. That kind of does it, you know, I don't want to get too specific, but you get the idea. You get the idea. That is the French point small, French sharp block. has its own quality here. I'll make that a bit richer so you can see what it's doing. Very sharp, see that? It's called sharp block for a reason because the strokes that you're gonna get with this, okay, are gonna be really crisp. And there are gonna be times where that can be a handy thing, okay? And it'd be fun to do an entire painting with this and just challenge yourself to see what can I do when I'm limited, <clears throat> limited to painting with something that gives me these kinds of marks, right? So it could be a very suggestive impressionistic landscape. You know, even something like this, you could you could just rough in. I'm making it really big here, but I could knock in a big background, you know, go slightly darker, we go a little bit warmer and darker up here. Darker at the bottom, warmer still. Bit of color, lighter, lighter color coming in there through the middle. Just make some interesting shapes. And then um, over this. Suggest a, a figure maybe, some, some kind of like cool lighting.
This also has a nice little built-in uh, canvas texture you can take advantage of, which is nice. So that's handy as well. I get my brush a little smaller, I could come in here and I could just suggest a few little details. Not getting crazy or anything. Right? Just not gonna, these brushes aren't gonna allow me to get super bogged down in rendering, are they? Uh, which is exactly the kind of thing you need sometimes to just find a new way to express yourself, something new you wanna try uh, with your work. And you know, this could creep into your, your regular work in some kind of interesting way, it doesn't have to dominate. Uh, but it, it could be a fun way to to just challenge yourself to try new things, right? And see what you get. If we take this and we Carry it down, I don't know. Maybe we go completely in a different direction. Maybe we take this color and we just do this. I don't know. I'm just playing around, guys. This is this is what I'm talking about. This is play, 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 play with brushes. Brushes allow you to experiment with reckless abandon. There are no consequences. What what's the worst thing that can happen? You make a stinky painting? Who cares? It's digital. It's just ones and zeros. Start a new one. Okay? Or take it and, and just play with it. Play with it some more until you get something you like. I don't know. But don't uh, don't sweat it. There's no there's no harm in experimenting. Right? You can just experiment all day. You might not wind up with anything you like at the end of the day, but you're gonna always learn something. I'll tell you what, you're always gonna learn something from the from the process. Right? There's no way you come out of this without having learned something, okay? About yourself and how you want to paint, about your materials, okay? I say materials, it's kind of a funny word for this, but you know, you know what I mean, okay? Well, look, you know, here's a little, there's a little impressionistic sort of sort of portrait we've made. And here's something else you could do that's fun. Check this out. You grab another brush like this impressionist impressionistic chunk brush, okay? Watch this. We're gonna we're gonna grab a color here, this this sort of orangey brown kind of color. Make a new layer. 
and just go to town with this brush. All right. In fact, you can go over your color dynamics and bump up that brightness jitter. So it's really, see that? You're really going to get a lot of different intense uh, changes. Do I say intense too much? Intense, just like camping. Get it? Whew, bad joke, sorry. Um, I don't know if you can hear that that noisy Wacom pot, uh, pen on the canvas on the uh, surface of my Cintiq. I hope not, but hey. I tried to move the microphone a little further away this time. I don't know if it made a big difference. So I'm going to do this. I know this doesn't seem like I'm doing anything useful, but check this out. I'm going to take advantage of blend modes. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do this. Now let's come over here to our blend modes and go to like overlay. Check that out. Check that out. Right? It's magic, folks. All right. Let's see any questions? Take me to Chunky Town, says Biola. <laughs> That's funny. Um. Who's my favorite artist? Says Hadar. Wow, I can't answer that question. I can tell you 10 or 20 of my favorites. Um, if you want people, do you want people alive or dead? Uh, dead people, let's see, how about um, Degas? Degas is amazing. I'm gonna say Norman Rockwell. I'm gonna say uh, Fetchin. I'm gonna say um, Ang. Uh, oh my goodness. Um, Bougaro. Uh, yeah, I could just go on. I, I Really, I like so many artists. It's impossible to name a favorite. Um, but yeah, what do you think about that? Isn't that fun? Just using blending modes, soft light, hard light. That's a cool one. Check that out. Oh, the figure just barely pops out of there. We just barely get her. You can knock that back in opacity, maybe 70%. Isn't that fun? Crop it down a little bit, All right? Crop your work. Don't forget to crop. Crop your work. Try and frame it nicely. Hey, I got a painting, I'm done. That ear's all wonky, but you know, I fixed that. Just hide this, grab this, grab that. Go back to what brush we were using, Sharp Mess, right? I think it was a Sharp Mess. Let me just fix this. Come around here. Just fix some of those shapes a little bit, okay? Bring back our texture. Well, all right, so there you have it. Pretty fun, okay. Moving on, Impressionist Chunk. We just covered that one. Got a ver variant, variant of it here that is really tightly spaced. Now let me grab a nice light color so you can see what this is doing. Okay, now what I like this for is painting inside of shapes. And I want to mention this as one of the most useful things about um, this brush set. Okay? Let's say I've got this little dress here and I want to do this. Just straight up and down. Okay? Isn't that great? Using the Impressionist brushes to paint inside of selections is a really good way to use them. Um, now I like this up and down thing I've got going on, right? So I'm gonna come over here. I'm just gonna continue that up and down action. It's subtle, 
You know, it's subtle. So I like this being able to carve out a shape with your lasso tool, paint inside of it with an impressionist brush, and then immediately you've got more interesting stuff than just flat color, immediately. Um, and you could do this all day long with a bunch of these different brushes in the set. Mix and match, right? Throw in some more texture here and there. Go ahead and lock your layer transparency right here if you want. And, um, Grab a, uh, a brush like this Syrah right here. Use that same color and just a bit lighter. Just go a little bit like that, add a bit more texture there. Isn't that interesting? Look at that. Maybe go super dark, throw a few of those in there. Towards the bottom. Light on top of it. Right, you could you could develop a whole style of illustration around just this technique if you wanted to, right? And all you have to do is make sure that you send me a cut, okay, every time you get an assignment. So, you know, because I did, after all, introduce you to it here on the show, and well, business is business, okay? So, business is business. All right, but yeah, check it out. You could do that. So uh, we skipped over a few. We don't want to do that. We do want to come back here to the old Monet brushes. Now, the Monet brushes, these are just some of my favorites. For impressionistic mark making. And this is what I like to do. I like to just kind of scrub around. Scrubby, scrubby, scrubby. This, using various amounts of uh, pressure as I do this. And when it's all done, come back and I look at what I've got. And it's just a nice big mess of brush marks, okay? Now, here's the Monet 2. A little tighter, okay? And a little more opaque, all right? So do with that what you will, but you're gonna be able to use these and do some pretty nifty stuff. A really fun exercise, if you wanna try it, is to go ahead and do a master study. Go ahead and grab one of his Rouen Cathedral paintings, you know? You did, I think, about 30 of those, I don't know. Um, R-O-U-E-N, Rouen, I believe is how you say it, Rouen. Mon français n'est plus uh, trop bien, trop bon, trop bien, trop bon, trop bon, en ce moment. Je ne parle pas assez de français. Dommage. Pizarro. Pizarro, check this out. Now, that's tight. Tight, tight, tight spacing, okay? What I've done in the past, I actually did a landscape with this brush, and what I found really fun was this. Moving side to side, okay? You're gonna get a little bit of pointillism action there. With this, I was painting uh, water with this brush. Just a little side to side action. Okay, and you of course notice that the direction of the brush stamp, right, that we're working with here is going to follow the direction of the stylus, okay? So that's a convenient thing. You know what you're gonna get when you use this brush, right? It's not gonna just rotate all over the place on you. It's gonna stick with that direction, right? But check that out. You grab a little lighter color. Just come in here, add some lighter bits. Go back to the darker. Kind of carve in and out of there. So you get your little highlights on the water. 
Back and forth and back and forth you go. There's a variant of it here. We have a Pizarro 2 brush. Okay, that one is going to be really lush. You'll try it, you'll notice you're putting a lot more paint down with every stroke. Okay, it's not going to respond to that pressure in the same way. All right. But try that, have a good time with that. All right. How about painting some trees, you know? It's like you got built in bark action right there. See what I mean? See how it's making a nice tree bark for you? But it's painterly, it's painterly. It's not gonna be, you know, I can size that down a bit and just kind of come right up against the edge of that, that tree right there. Go a little darker on this side. And back and forth we go. So I got one more important thing to mention here about, about these um, brushes. Now you'll, you'll discover the rest on your own. Of course we have Syrah for that pointillism that we all know and love, right? Petit déjeuner sur le grand jat, is that it? Or déjeuner sur le grand jat, or something sur le grand jat. Big famous painting. It's Syrah Control. It's going to give you a lot more control with smaller dots. Signac. Or pointillism. Different shape. Got three of those for you to play with. And of course, in the end, we have our good pal, Van Gogh. Van Gogh. I want to say Van Gogh, but you know, I know you're not supposed to say that. But that is a Van Gogh, Van Gogh look if ever I did see one. Nice. Try painting um, <clears throat> a chair with this, a nice wooden chair, you know, in a room. Now, quick thing to mention is this, smudging. You wanna smudge with uh, some impressionist brushes, right? That would be fun and that would be useful. Um, we have here, when you grab those brushes, um, there are smudgers. And I, um, don't have them loaded at the moment, so I'm just gonna grab them. So bear with me for a moment. Uh, impressionist, here we go. Gonna have to load them through here because I don't have, don't have them. Load tool presets. Come in here to the old impressionist brushes. There we go. The blenders, they're called, are very handy. So I'll put some color down here. Put some color next to it. You'll be able to find one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five different blenders for you right here. Look at that. You can blend those two together. Wonderful. And I got another one right there. Um, and by the way, everybody, I have a hotkey set up. The letter S calls up my smudge tool for me. And you can set that in Photoshop if you want under preferences, okay? Go here, edit, keyboard shortcuts, okay? And when you open that up, go ahead and find the smudge tool and set it to S for smudge if you wanna do that. If you want, if you use the smudge tool a lot, which I do. So look at this, I've got a nice, look at that blender. That's a great blender right there. So they pair so nicely together, you get your your, your painting, right? If I wanna go up to that um, Syrah brush, right, for example, maybe I'm painting with that one day. And I've got these two areas here, and I wanna just kinda of blend them together a little bit. So I come down and I use this Blender 2, Impressionist Blender 2. Just do that, just kind of smudge them all together. You can sort of stab at it a little bit if you want to get that kind of a look to it, right? Very handy. Um, so be sure and, and try those out. 
and see what you think. Okay, right here, no color at all. I'll just go ahead and use the smudge now. We'll try this Impressionist Blender 5 and just smudge that out. Lovely. Okay, go ahead and change the strength of your blending for a different effect. There you go. Hope you enjoyed Brush Hour. We'll be back in two weeks and we'll be looking at another brush set. Till then, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, everybody be kind, and I'll be sure to see you soon. Ciao for now.